Simulation games in 2023, will they be good? Maybe, you let me know. 30 games today and this is going to be focusing on the more gamey management tycoon and building sims and less about super realistic simulators. But I will talk about some of those realistic ones at the end. Now, let's get started. First up, it's Tectonica by Firehose Games. Tectonica is a first-person factory automation game set beneath the surface of an alien planet. Work alone or in co-op to build factories, gather resources, research new technologies, mold the destructible terrain, establish a base of operations, and uncover long-forgotten secrets. This looks like a snazzier and flashier satisfactory which might be just the twist some of you needed. If you're not so sure there's a free demo for Tectonica, then it'll be an early access release, but there's no confirmed release window announced yet. Next is Plan B Terraform by Gaddy Games. Terraform a lifeless rock into a lush and habitable world. Build trucks, trains, and sprawling factories on an enormous hexagonal planet. Grow its population to millions. Enjoy a dynamic simulation of atmosphere, temperature, water, and forests. And you know, it's hard to separate simulation games from trains and logistics. And this one has both, with the added goal of terraforming a planet. The full environmental simulation is the big selling point here. And it would be nice if it is actually all properly simulated and shown to you. Full release is meant for early 2024 at the latest. So we'll see how development goes for Plan B Terraform. Next we've got Astro Colony by Terrad Games. Explore an endless universe and create the most efficient constellation of colonies. Build conveyor systems to automate production, take care of astronauts and their needs, establish new colonies as part of intergalactic simulation. The unique thing here is how things take place in space, and you can connect various lands together as part of your complex monstrosity of a construction. Move stations and dock them, explore and exploit various biomes, construct unique transport systems, recruit astronauts and fulfill their needs, research technologies, and play in co-op multiplayer. Astro Colony is planning to release by the end of 2023, but of course it could take longer depending on how development progresses. Coming back down to the ground, it's Park Beyond by Limbic Entertainment. In Park Beyond, you can create the park of your dreams without being held back by gravity. The accessible controls and the story-driven campaign mode promise to help you learn the ropes of the park management and build increasingly crazy rides and modular coasters. There have been many games like this over the years, some better than others, but personally, as an old-school fan of Theme Park by Bullfrog, it's always a little exciting seeing a new park game. We can't always trust the trailers, though. Some in the past have looked better than what we got. The plan for Park Beyond is to release in 2023, and it will be interesting to see whether it does beat out the competition. Okay, now we're a bit into the video, I'm sure you're enjoying it so far. I've spent a lot of time on this, so if you do appreciate what you see here, please do press the like button. It's free and it helps a lot. I'd also love to know which game on the list is your favorite. So comment down below, it helps me look for more games that you will want to see. Alright, next game. Horticula by Indirection Games. You have been magically summoned by mysterious gnomes to restore a long-lost garden. Attract adorable animals, build a lush environment, and immerse yourself in this relaxing garden builder. Will you manage to reclaim the wasteland or succumb to a looming corruption? Overall, this looks super charming and really refined based on the trailer. Creative freedom, a simulated animal ecosystem, weather and day-night cycles, magic upgrades, and quirky characters. This game is about the simple pleasures, but is still complex enough to be a game. Aiming for a 2023 release, if you're looking for a cozy, chill experience, then this seems perfect for that. For a bit of a weird one, it's MMORPG Tycoon 2 by Vectorstorm. This is a single-player world builder game about creating the greatest MMORPG of all time, yours. 
Okay, an odd concept, and at first glance, the visuals look like a super simple voxel block thing. And you'd think this would be some minor indie project with not much going for it, but so far it has been proving itself. It entered early access mid-2020, so it's been a few years now, and has thousands of reviews on Steam with a very positive rating. People are definitely enjoying this one. There's no estimated release window for MMORPG Tycoon 2, so you could jump in now if you like what you see, but it could be many years before it's fully completed. Going back to Trains, Art of the Rail by Rocketworks. A spiritual remake of the classic Transport Tycoon games. Build a profitable transport network and grow your world's economy, either on your own in single player or in multiplayer whether cooperative or competitively. This one is all about trains. Visually, it looks relatively simple, though that's rarely a deal breaker for fans of these kind of games. It's just we have a lot of train-based games already out there and more on the way, so I'm thinking there are only so many train enthusiasts out there, and we're gonna run out of players at some point. At least with so much competition, the cream will rise to the top, Art of the Rail is planning for an early access release, but there's no description from the developer on Steam right now, which also doesn't really inspire confidence. Staying on track, it's Sweet Transit by Ernestas Norvaisas. Sweet Transit is a unique city builder simulation transport thing where the railway is king and trains are the sole means of transportation. Quaint villages will expand to bustling cities farms to industrious factories, and steam-powered rail to combustious diesel, and beyond in this interconnected train-driven world. So here's another train game with a more realistic look and has been in early access since mid-2020, with mostly positive reviews on Steam. Meaning it's doing okay since the early release, but it's got some work to do if it wants to keep the momentum going. It is driving towards a mid-2023 release, so Sweet Transit should be completed soon and we can see what it finally turns out to be at the end of the day. But as with many of these games, it could just take longer than planned. And then we have Super Zoo Story by Super Zoo Story Team. Build and manage your own personal zoo in the Pixel Marvel RPG. Construct your park, care for your animals and ensure the happiness of both critters and humans alike. Maybe even find that special someone while building the zoo of your dreams. So this is clearly inspired by Stardew Valley. This is focusing on the animal part, where you build a whole zoo to attract visitors. It's an interesting take, but some might feel it's just a bit too much like Stardew Valley. I mean, it kind of looks like an elaborate Stardew mod. Which doesn't make it bad, it's just hard to not think of another game, and you'll have to decide if that's a problem. Looking at a 2023 release, if you're interested in Super Zoo Story, then it shouldn't be too much longer for you to get your zoo management on. Next, we've got Terraformers by Asteroid Lab. Terraformers is an expansive turn-based colony builder and resource management game with rogue-like elements. Explore the red planet, develop spectacular cities, spread life and terraform the planet with ambitious projects. This does look nice, but a little stiff visually, though it's been doing reasonably well through early access. Since early 2022, it's garnered very positive reviews on Steam, seemingly due to fun puzzle gameplay, replayability and fulfilled promises by the developers. Terraformers was supposed to be out of early access by the end of 2022, but it seems to be taking longer than expected, so maybe a 2023 release now. Staying on a planetary scale, it's Hexoplanet by Max Gittel. You take control over a robot civilization that recently achieved self-consciousness and needs to prepare a new planet for their masters, the humans. This is cute, nice premise, and the hex-based gameplay looks to have a lot of potential. The graphical style is also great, being cartoony but quite naturalistic with how it's all put together. It's, it looks nice to look at, you know? 
Lots of factories, transportation, terraforming, researching, tourism, a campaign, and mod support. Planning to be in early access for up to a year. Hopefully this becomes playable soon and we can see Hexaplanet become everything it's promising to be. Building up from nothing, it's Captain of Industry by Mafi Games. Land your crew of survivors on an abandoned island and survive. Mine raw materials, grow food, build factories, manufacture products, research new tech, and trade with others. Become an industrial superpower. But this is no easy task. You'll be put to the test to keep your settlement alive. This has been in early access since mid-2022 and gotten very positive reviews on Steam, so this is doing well. It's got a lot of resources, vehicles, systems, needs, and more that all come together centered around conquering and maintaining the environment. Although Captain of Industry is playable and enjoyable now, full release is still looking at a few years in the future. So it'll be a bit of a wait if you want to wait for completion. For a robot building simulation, Mars First Logistics by Shape Shop. An open world of physics simulation game. Build mechanized rovers and transport awkwardly shaped cargo across the surface of Mars. Earn funds, unlock new parts, and use your ingenuity to establish a new space colony. Playable solo or in online co-op, robot and vehicle construction to complete tasks is always a fun endeavor, and this being on Mars is a nice premise. Setting up for a 2023 release, you don't have to wait that long to check out Mars First Logistics because there's a free demo, so have a look if intrigued. Then it's Lightyear Frontier by Framebreak and Amplifier Game Invest. Lightyear Frontier is a peaceful open-world farming adventure on a planet at the far edge of the galaxy. Start your new home on a distant planet with up to three friends as you farm alien crops, build your homestead, and explore the untamed wilderness of the world. You'll also be exploring a planet filled with secrets and piloting and upgrading your mech, which is kind of the main point of the whole game. But also, it's a chill one, where you can relax on this peaceful world with seasons. This seems like a nice, chill, sci-fi farming sim game, and could be the refuge you're looking for right now. But we'll have to wait to see how it turns out. Aiming for a spring 2023 release, we should be able to jump into our mechs and farm and chill relatively soon. Going back in time, it's Noble's Life, Kingdom Reborn by Gentle Griffins. Realistic medieval nobles simulator and at the same time a strategy game with historical depth. Manage your city and villages and make decisions in non-linear events. Command defenses in epic sieges and organize dangerous raids. This looks surprisingly good visually, but good-looking trailers from indie productions always makes me feel a little cautious. If it does turn out as good as promised, this could be a hit. Promising to be an immersive strategy sim, you'll get to choose what kind of ruler you want to be. There are sieges, raids, and more taking place across medieval Europe. There's a lot to deliver, but the estimated release is 2024, so there's a lot of time for Noble's Life Kingdom Reborn to pull it all together. Now for some mayhem with Instruments of Destruction by Radian Games. Instruments of Destruction is a vehicle building sandbox featuring advanced physics-based destruction. Create crazy construction vehicles and use them to demolish buildings and complete various objectives. Pure destructive satisfaction is something that a lot of people can enjoy. And this one does seem to do it with a good amount of spectacle. From its current position, the full version is meant to have more islands, objectives, parts, and a structure editor, and more. So there is a lot on the horizon. This might have a 2023 release, but it's much more likely for Instruments of Destruction to take a few more years to complete. For a future kind of business, we've got Nivalis by Ion Lands. 
grow your business, manage restaurants and nightclubs, make friends and enemies, buy and decorate apartments, go fishing, and maybe even find love in Nivalis. The city that stretches from ocean to the clouds. You know all those shops you see and visit in those cyberpunk games? Well, now you're the shopkeep. And that is a bit of an interesting angle to approach a cyberpunk future. It's probably not going to be quite as violent, but there's so much being promised that it's kind of not just a business tycoon game, but a life sim game, which does make room for a lot of exploration and discovery. Things that can really bring a cyberpunk world to life. No current release plans for Nivalis, but I would genuinely love to see what it turns out to be. For another business management, Blooming Business Casino by Homo Ludens. Now, I was sponsored to check out Blooming Business Casino a couple years ago, so I'll keep this mostly factual. Gameplay here is focused on the building and management of the casino, kind of like the casino aspect in Evil Genius 2, but it's all about that side of things. Dealing with various events, bad actors, and just the flow of customer types, each with their own needs and preferences, adds quite a bit of dynamics to how you would build, but I only played an early demo of the game, so things have been developing since. Playtests have been taking place through 2022, and a 2023 release for Blooming Business Casino is expected. Then we've got Automation Station by Scott Daly. Explore a mysterious planet, harvest and refine resources, discover new technology, craft machines, and set up automated factories. Basically, collect, craft, automate, and innovate in an expanding physics sandbox world filled with discoveries. This game looks kind of simple, but nice with the potential of vast complexity. Though it really needs a trailer to show off longer gameplay and action, there are short clips on the developer's Twitter if you want to have a glimpse at bits of gameplay. And also, there's no real release plan for Automation Station yet, so I'd probably just check back with this one sometime later. Next is Foundry by Meder Dynamics. Build a factory in an infinite simulated voxel world. Mine resources, craft machinery, and automate your research progress. Face logistic challenges by planning and building a conveyor belt and pipe network. Manage a complex power system and expand your constantly growing production lines. This is another first-person factory conveyor belt resource manufacturing game on a sci-fi world, so it seems like Satisfactory has a few new games coming for it. Generally, it's good to see new games trying to top older ones because it's either we get something better or we can always go back to what was. But either way, it'll be interesting to see how this stacks up. Going into early access in 2023, Foundry will become playable soon, but might take a year or two to fully complete. Going back to the farm, it's The Ranchers by Red Pill Studio. The Ranchers is an open-world country life sim for one to four players. Raise animals, grow crops, craft machines, build your dream house, and explore the gigantic open world where mines and dangerous monsters are abound. Earn the villagers' respect and esteem, and who knows, maybe find love and start a family. Farming, life sim, adventuring, finding love, petting your dog, and fighting unholy burning lava demons intent on murdering you. Quite a lot to this game. It is always a nice idea having so much in one game, because you can imagine spending countless hours living in that world. But unless all the parts are up to high standards, the uneven experience can just start to feel messy and confusing. The plan for The Ranchers is a quarter 3 2023 release, meaning if you're interested, there might still be a bit of a wait for this one, but hopefully it's not delayed. Next we have Innkeeper by Venolith. Embody an innkeeper in a unique first-person management game set in a medieval fantasy world. Build your inn, adapt to your clientele, and establish a thriving economy. Medieval tavern management isn't the most original idea, as there are many games that have attempted this, some succeeding more than others. So it's hard to call at this point which way this one is going to go. 
If you're looking for a new tavern manager, keep an eye on this one and see if it turns out better than what we already got. Farming, cooking, cleaning and fishing in a semi-open world, there's a lot of promise for Innkeeper. So we'll see what's served to us when it releases, whenever that will be. Going darker, we've got Dungeons 4 by Realm Forge Studios. The absolute evil and its trusted <clears throat> servant, the dark elf Thalia, return in Dungeons 4 after the events of its fabulous predecessor to bring about their triumph over the forces of good once more. Turning pleasant lands into a holiday paradise for evil is a cool idea and there does seem to be Dungeon Keeper inspirations. Of course, this is the fourth entry to the series, so if you want to basically know what the game is about, you can easily check out Dungeons 3. It's just promising this is going to be bigger and better, which is what all sequels should do. Building towards a 2023 release, Dungeons 4 should be transforming the land soon enough. Now a bit more alchemical with Potion Tycoon by Snowhound Games. Potion Tycoon is a management simulator with a witchy twist. Build and develop your very own magic shop, manage resources, set up production lines, mix potions, and sell them smartly to stay ahead of the competition. Oddly not the only potion game recently, but this one has a bit more base building and management to set up your production chains and keep your business running. Brewing a 2023 release, there's a free sample you can try for yourself right now to see if Potion Tycoon is something you want to be waiting for. Next is Farm Folks by Crytivo. Farm Folks is a solar punk open world co-op farming and life simulator game. Unleash your imagination, build, automate, and customize every detail of your farm. Grow crops, nurture animals, and befriend locals to cultivate the ultimate sim experience. Farming life sims can always be chill, cozy fun, but there have been a lot of them going around. And also, Farm Folks' trailer doesn't exactly show all that much. And generally, we should probably wait for this to have some kind of release before judging how good or bad it is. Crytivo isn't a stranger to many, many, many year developments. So farm folks will be going into early access first, but I won't guess when it will be. For one, we've been waiting a long time for. It's Kerbal Space Program 2 by Intercept Games. Kerbal Space Program was a sensation. It was an absolute success as a game and with its virality. Topping that is going to be a massive challenge and this sequel hasn't been smooth flying. Firstly, it's not the same developers as the first game. Who the developers are has changed since this was announced. It was announced in 2019 with a 2020 release window, but it was delayed to 2022, but now it's delayed to 2023. I do really want this to be good. Something even better than the original will be a masterpiece in the simulation genre, but it's just hard to picture it with all the problems so far. Maybe good, maybe bad. We'll just have to keep waiting to see if this new generation of Kerbals will actually stick the landing. And then for one I'm personally very excited about, Elysian Eclipse by Seven Ducks Studios. Over the years, a number of developers have been trying to bring back Spore, and this one looks to have a lot of potential. Elysian Eclipse is a sandbox evolution simulator, letting you evolve from an amoeba into a space-traveling sentient being. Create your own creatures, buildings, and vehicles, to conquer procedural planets. Turn the galaxy into your personal playground. Of all the Spore successors I've seen, this one looks the best at least. It's still got a long way to go, but if it does really come together and get the polish it deserves, we could finally get that Spore too so many of us crave. Have to say though, there's only one main developer, so expect progress to be slow with this one. Planning to go into early access at some point first, Elysian Eclipse is going to be a project we watch for a while, I'm thinking. 
Now, to get into the sim of sims, starting with Tiny Life by Elpec. This is almost feeling like a demake of The Sims 1, and with everyone looking towards the future of The Sims and how other competitors are beginning to arise, it's interesting to see a more indie and small-scale approach to the dollhouse life simulation. Tiny Life, although a simpler expression of the subgenre, could be a nice reprieve from the overly complicated modern entries, and could serve as a breather, which would be nice. In Tiny Life, you control a set of people that live together in a household. You take care of their daily needs, build their skills, forge new relationships, or just mess up their entire life in whatever way you can think of. Sounds familiar. Basically, if you're looking for a retro approach, this might be a cool novelty, if nothing else, but it might actually form into a complex simulation, as simpler graphics can make room for more gameplay. Looking for a quarter one 2023 release, there's a free demo for Tiny Life you can check out yourself. Then, for the competitor on everybody's lips, it's Paralives by Alex Massey, the big competitor to The Sims. The promise of Paralives is basically The Sims, but with more detail and without EA, which sounds exactly like what so many have been asking for. But The Sims does have one strength almost no other can compete with, which is personality and iconicism. My concern is that Paralives ends up being a good game with no personality, which could work, but many would still just default over to The Sims. Sort of like comparing SimCity to City Skylines, Skylines can feel quite devoid of personality, but when gameplay is so elaborate and so good, then it doesn't really matter. So maybe Paralives will do something similar. This has shown off a good number of innovations and improvements compared to The Sims so far, but there's still a lot more that needs to be done if it wants to be a true competitor. And then, of course, there's The Sims 5 by Maxis. Now, not much has been revealed about The Sims 5. Well, practically nothing. It's been talked about, though, and one thing EA seems to be working towards is being more online, because of course they are. That could easily be something that's intrusive and annoying, such as forcing always online or poorly implemented multiplayer, but I can imagine interesting and fun uses for more online functionality in The Sims. It's just a matter of trust and EA, which isn't in a great place. Not to mention The Sims 4 is already lacking in many ways compared to earlier entries. The Sims 2 easily has the most character and designable neighborhoods as missed. The Sims 3 fully open and seamless world could make a comeback now that modern tech can handle just more. Though most say The Sims 4 has the best building, if EA does a miracle and puts the best of all games into one with a few more innovations, The Sims 5 could easily blow the rest out of the water. Or the series will continue down the path of lifelessness and rigidity. Whatever it ends up being, one thing we can be sure of is that there will be a massive slew of DLC, expansions, and stuff packs for The Sims 5, which will end up costing thousands of dollars. Now, this list has particularly avoided super realistic simulators, and I want to talk about those now. But if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed your time here, and it'd be greatly appreciated if you could like the video. So just to list off a few more hardcore realistic simulators to explain what I mean, here's some slated for 2023. Chef Life, a restaurant simulator. Ranch simulator. Cowboy Life simulator. Landlord Super. Haunted House Renovator. Sprocket, and ASMR food experience. And I'm also sure there's gonna be a new farming simulator as well. See, the way I see it is there's a clear difference between simulation games and simulators. Yeah, the line between them is a bit blurry, genres are all made up anyway, but generally speaking, simulation games and simulators are two different genres for two different audiences. My difficulty is communicating this difference because I'm sure some of you came here for simulators and are disappointed, while others are looking for simulation games and keep finding simulators. If you have any suggestions on how we can solve this miscommunication, I'd love to hear what you think. 
Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Go watch my lists on other genres. There's so many. Go check them out. And I'll see you there in the next video.